Hi friends! I'm Becky from thepinksamurai.com and in today's video for Enamel Pins 101 I'm going to talk about files and how to set up your files for delivery to your manufacturer. Okay, so let's get into it. The file type that uh, manufacturers want are vector files. These are files that you can make in Adobe Illustrator. There are other vector programs out there that you can get. I believe there are some free ones online that you can check out, but Adobe Illustrator is really the standard. If you don't have Illustrator and you have uh, Photoshop or you use something like Procreate that doesn't use vector files at all, um, a lot of manufacturers can provide artwork. Um, so you send them your Photoshop file and then they will vectorize it for you. Uh, sometimes it's an extra cost. Sometimes they added them for free, it's kind of a bonus for using them. So that's something to think about if you don't have um, something like that. Um, you can also send them a sketch if they provide artwork. Um, and just know that it could be an extra cost. So you want to look out for um, vector files. And really, Adobe Illustrator is the best. Um, you can get Creative Cloud, it's a monthly payment. Um, I really I highly recommend it. I have been using Adobe Illustrator for 12, 15 years maybe, <laughs> a long time, and I love it. And uh, there are a bajillion tutorials on how to use it, um, and I'll probably put a few up here myself later uh, specifically for pen stuff. But what I'm going to be talking about mostly is working with Adobe Illustrator. So, get it. It's great. <laughs> okay, so you've got Adobe Illustrator and um, you have a sketch. Okay, and you wanna get your sketch into Adobe Illustrator. If you don't use um, like a program on your iPad where you can send it straight over, what I did um, for a long time, and sometimes I still do it if I'm feeling lazy, is I have a sketch in a sketchbook, take a picture of it with my phone, and then email it to myself. <laughs> Okay, so my biggest tips with working with Adobe Illustrator and sending something to a manufacturer is that you need to outline and expand everything. So if you have any text, if you leave it just as text, if you type it out it's in a text box, send it to your manufacturer, they might not have that font. And then it'll turn it into Marianne Pro and nobody wants that. So you want to outline your text. Always remember to outline your text. That makes the letters shape and uh, then they can, they can use it. And um, you also wanna do the same with your strokes. So strokes, if you put like a one point stroke around everything and resize it, then the one point stroke looks a little smaller than it did when it was, when the artwork was smaller. If that makes sense, I will probably have an example of what that looks like, because it's kind of hard to explain without <laughs> an example. But always expand your strokes. There's like no question to your manufacturer as to how big a stroke should be. Okay, so you're in Illustrator, you've um, got all your text outlined, you've got your strokes expanded, and uh, you've got some space in between some stuff. So um, something you wanna look out for and something that a manufacturer might come back with is something called recessed metal. So um, I have an example of this. My pin of the month I did with Sharon of Sherodactyl Art. Um, we have a little cat tail and it's a little bit further away from the cat's cute little booty and they had to use a little bit of recessed metal there. And that's something to look out for. So if you don't like the look of that, I think it looks great on this pin, but if you want to avoid that, then you could move the tail up or move it down and go for a cutout. So a cutout can cost a little bit more because it's a little more labor intensive for them. Um, it's a lot more detail in the mold. So a good example of that is the dinosaur pen I did with Libby of Lux Cups in February of 2015. And that one's got big cutout, you know, the, the tail is separate, the neck is separate. Um, they're really pretty. And so that takes a little bit and that will add to the cost of your mold. But if that's something that you want, keep that in mind. And another thing you can do if you've got a space is just fill it with the metal, <laughs> um, like the pin 
um, Nina of Me So Happy worked on for my subscription too. So she has the space between the cup and the handle and she just filled that with flat. So that could have been recessed, it could have been cut out, but I think it looks really cute um, just as flat metal. And that will cost a little bit less um, too, even than recessed metal I think. Um, so those are things to think about and if a manufacturer comes back when they have your mock-up for you they will notate if there's recessed metal so now you kind of have if you look back at this video you can kind of have a reference point as to what recessed metal really looks like <laughs> okay so you have your stuff outlined you you know what you want to do but now you're not really sure what size to make your pen um, I like to start out with an inch my little alien pen um, was just an inch and I liked it a lot. Um, I think it'll take a little bit of um, I don't know trial and error for you just to see what you like. Some people like making giant pens, some people like making teeny tiny pens, but I think starting out with an inch is a good idea. Um, but a fun trick that you could do <laughs> that will help out immensely and um, it'll even help with just seeing how your design elements will sit is to print it out. Just size it in your document to an inch, inch and a quarter, and just see what it looks like and cut it out if you want to and just to see physically what it's going to be and know that uh, it probably won't be perfectly exactly like that when you get it. Um, like I said in the last video, if you're getting hard enamel, your um, lines might be a little bit fatter um, if you're getting soft enamel, they might be a little bit smaller. So um, those are some things to think about, but it gives you a really good general idea of how you want your pen to look. So um, I definitely recommend, especially when you're first starting out and you don't really have a good reference point for what sizes work, um, print it out. It's super easy. So manufacturers use Pantone solid coated color book. Um, if you have Illustrator, you can look up that color book, add it in your swatches, and pick from there. Um, it's super easy. Uh, they might not match on your screen as they do in real life, but at least it's a good starting point. I do recommend getting one of these. This one was about 100 bucks. I think I got it on eBay because they usually come in a two-pack, and I just needed the solid coated. It's all you need. Um, and... Uh, Maybe I got it on Amazon. They definitely have ones on Amazon. Um, I'll find exactly what I bought and put a link down below so you know exactly what I use. Um, but it's just invaluable. They, they can match the colors exactly. It's industry standard um, for what they use and you know that you're going to get exactly the same color. Unless the manufacturer has messed up, you know you're getting the right color. So um, I love this thing. I use it every time. I also get a little bit crazy. I don't use it at night anymore because I don't trust the um, yellowness in my light. <laughs> I only pick my colors in the middle of the day <laughs> with natural light now because I'm crazy town. Um, but I mean, I did go my first year without using one and just using the solid coated swatches in Illustrator. So you can still do that if you're not ready. Um, I look at it like I just need to sell, you know, 10 to 12 pins to pay for this. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much. And I think it makes my life a lot easier now. And then I get really excited to like open up and, and pick what colors I want and see what they look like next to each other. And, and I don't know, I'm a color nerd. Uh, when I was little, my first job I ever wanted was to be a colorist at Disney. So this is kind of like living my dream. <laughs> But yes, I highly recommend um, getting one of these, but it's not totally necessary. So I've got something a little fun to help you out a little bit. I have an Illustrator file as a download for you, and you can check the link below. And it has an example of exactly what I send to my manufacturers with um, a sample pen and then exactly how I set up my Pantone colors underneath and um, how I add any other extra details so if I'm gonna do screen printing 
if I want to make sure of a certain thickness of the pen, you can add it. And if you have a back stamp, you want to add. Um, I talked more about those things in the last video. But if you want to have an example of something to send to your manufacturer that you can just plug and play, feel free to use it <laughs> as it is, um, then click the link below and you can download it. I thought that would be fun. It's something I use uh, every single time I, uh, I message my manufacturer. So I hope it helps. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Um, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and all that stuff. So, and feel free to share it with your friends if you've got other pen makers. And also be sure to check out the first video and I promise I will be uploading more videos to the series soon. Thanks guys. Bye.